Now, I decided to make some heat maps to help us look at the data from the Rossi et al. study. Hopefully, I didn't make any mistakes here, but I want to actually just make things look a bit better and a bit clearer for people. The first heat map we are going to be looking at is the heat map for one to five years of finasteride treatment. This heat map shows the likelihood of a patient's condition in the first year of treatment changing or staying the same by the fifth year. And when I say changing, I mean worsening or growing or improving or whatever, right? For example, if a patient's condition improved in the first year, there's a 53% chance that this improvement will continue or get better by the fifth year. It does not mean that 53% of all patients improved, but rather that among those who improved in the first year, 53% continue to see improvements over the next four years. And you can see that in this sort of heat map that I have on the screen. Now, the heat map for one to 10 years. Similarly, this heat map indicates the probability of changes in a patient's condition, air condition that is, over a longer period of time, from year one to year 10. For instance, if someone's condition improved in the first year, there's a 68% chance that they will either maintain or see further improvements in their condition by the 10th year. Now, the heat map comparing 5 to 10 years, so the 5 to 10 year range, this heat map focuses on the changes or stability in the patient's condition from year 5 up to year 10. It shows that if a patient's condition improves by the fifth year, there's a 73% chance that this improvement will peak in its effectiveness or persist by the 10th year. So let's do a deeper look here between year 5 and year 10. The transition probabilities between 5 and 10 years per patient. So if you're not looking at the screen, please look at the screen now. But if not, I guess I can kind of verbalize what's going on. You have a heat map with values, right? And we need to understand what these colors mean. Darker blue. So the darker blue indicates higher probabilities of the afflicted male pattern baldness individual's condition remaining stable or improving from year 5 to year 10. For example, the darkest blue square with the value of 1 indicates that all patients with the highest positive response at year 5 remain positive at year 10. The lighter blue and green areas, these are the lower probabilities, indicating that a lower likelihood of the condition remaining the same or less certainty about the outcome. For instance, a light blue square with the value of 0.14 suggests a smaller chance that the patient who had no change at year 5 would see improvement by year 10. The yellow-green tones, or the yellowish-green tones that we see, represents the lowest probabilities. For example, a yellowish-green square with a value of 0 indicates a very low probability of transition so this heat map provides a visual representation of how a patient's response to finasteride treatment for hair growth evolves between the 5th and 10th year of treatment in this study. Looking at the horizontal axis, we have the response at the 5th year mark, values ranging from negative 3 to 3, positive 3, right? So negative numbers indicate worsening of the hair growth as according to the researchers and how they rank them while positive numbers indicate improvements. The vertical axis shows the response at the 10-year mark using the same scale. The color intensity within each cell reflects the probability of a patient transitioning from their 5th-year response to 10-year response with darker colors denoting a higher probability. The cells that fall along the diagonal line of the heat map are particularly noteworthy as they indicate the probability of a patient's condition remaining consistent over time. For example, a cell intersecting the point where both the 5th year and 10 year responses are marked as 1 exhibits a probability of 0.73. This suggests that patients who were in a slightly improved state at the 5th year checkpoint had a 73% chance of maintaining that level of improvement the 10th year mark. Looking at the cells that do not fall in the diagonal line provides insights into the changes in patients' conditions. Take, for instance, a cell where the 5-year response is zero, signifying no change. 
and the 10-year response is 1, indicating improvement. This cell has a probability of 0.14. This indicates that there was a 14% chance that patients here who saw no change at the 5th year mark would experience improvements by the 10th year mark. So this might be saying that, hey, some people hit their peak at the 5th year mark. Maybe that's all you can get in terms of your hair growth, and from there, you're going to be shedding, going through seasonal sheds, your hair might be going through another synchronized shed, and finally, it's just the fact that DHT is still present in your scalp. And this could be a progression, albeit a very slower progression, of your natural hair loss. So again, some people here might start to look at dutasteride. But at year five, there's about a 14% chance that patients who didn't experience any change, so any growth of hair, would go on to see some sort of great improvement at the 10-year mark. It's most likely that they just stay the same. So from this heat map, we can see some probabilities where patients lost some hair between year 5 and year 10. They either didn't improve because they capped out in their hair growth, or they got a little bit of improvement up to year 10. But it seems to be the case between years 5 and 10, people were still above their baseline. So year 10 was better than year 1.